Hello super users and welcome to the fifth and final module where we are going to look at some really long scripts in Keyboard Maestro. Now in full transparency we're not going through these scripts step by step and we're not going to create them because these are specifically uh, for my setup but I will definitely walk you through what exactly is going on that way you can recreate them for yourself. So there are really five spots I found that are really useful for a long macro. The first one is when you're starting a new piece there's often, especially if you have a larger ensemble, many different things that you have to set up and different settings to do, and it's different for every single ensemble. And you could use templates. I personally start off with a Keyboard Meister and JW Lua script combo. That way I only need one document styles and I don't need like 20 different templates. The next thing is resetting a document to its defaults. This is really good if you're copying and pasting from an old document or if you're working with someone else's document and you want to set it up to your own document styles or your own styles and your own liking. The next thing is creating the score and the parts. I personally create the score and the parts in two separate files and so a Keyboard Maestro macro is a really good way of saving both the files and getting a lot of the small little details worked out that way there's just less work to do. Another one is using the Perfect Layout plugin. This is what I use to get out all the collisions. And if you've ever used it, there's a bunch of pop-up dialog boxes with warnings of things you should and should not do. And so using a Keyboard Maestro macro really helps make sure that yes, all those things are done before you run the plugin. That way you don't ever have to worry about doing it. And finally, a good Keyboard Maestro macro is exporting everything to PDFs and converting the audio to MP3s. This way you don't even have to worry about any of that stuff. Just press a button and it works all the magic for you. So I'm going to quickly walk you through some of the logic from the starting a new piece script that I am still in the middle of creating. Uh, there will be another course on this script when I'm done. That way you can actually recreate it from the ground up yourself. So this one, it has a couple very, very simple uh, sections to it. The first one is getting user input. So I can figure out what type of ensemble it is, what the title is, what the composer is. The next one is just opening up the document styles. And then it's updating the document info, such as the title and everything in the document styles, running a Lua script that is specific to the piece, and then finally some quick other maintenance stuff. And then lastly, there's one more group that I have yet to add is to save everything. So first, let's just see it in action. So if I hit Control L for the long scripts and then N for start new piece, it will give me a dialog box where I can then say, I want like trombone choir. Hit this, enter the title, like, I don't know, Blastissimo, something like that. Uh, and then composer, that is me. And then hit OK. And it automatically sets up the piece. Couple bugs to work out, but that is the gist of it. And so let's dive in and see what it's doing. So the first thing is it's gathering user input. That's you know, when I had this dialog box right here, that's what it was doing. And basically it's just prompt with list from text of all these various things. So the title is ensemble, and then I could just have a bunch of ensembles here. And it saves it to a variable named ensemble. And then we prompt for specific details, such as the title, subtitle, etc. And it even fills in with the variable, the variable name. So for instance, if I type in Charm Choir, even says for your next trombone choir piece, which I think is a decently cool addition. And then finally, I just filter all the variables to be uppercase because I like things being uppercase. As you can see, Blastissimo's uppercase, Composer's uppercase. That's just what I do. And then we actually open up the document styles. We're gonna go to File, Open Worksheets and Repertoire. You could do Open. Uh, I just found that this specific one works better and it's more consistent for me. Type in the keystroke command G. All that does is the keystroke basically lets us go to a specific file somewhere in the system. That way you don't have to manually click through all of these only to find and end up being in the wrong spot. Then command return to select that. And then as soon as the button is highlighted is enabled, I open it. Then we're gonna add the document info where I type in command K to get to the document options. So that's command K. Then I just wait until the document options are open. You've seen this before. And once 
they're open, I make sure that we're in the correct tab. Because for instance, there's the file info and the instrument list. And so I just change it to the correct tab if it's not already there. That's what that section is doing. And then once it's doing it, we just tab through all the different text inserts like title, subtitle, composer, arranger, etc. And I use this, that way my copyright is always up to date. And then finally hit Command K to close it. Then I run a P specific script. So this depends on the ensemble, and these are JW Lewis scripts that actually create the ensemble. So for instance, this ensemble over here was created with JW Lua, the tall measure numbers, JW Lua, measure numbers below each system, JW Lua, the actual size, that way we can get two systems on one page, JW Lua. If I do the orchestra script, it also makes the page larger, so it makes it square 11 by 17, and the parts 9 by 12. That's again all through JW Lua. It makes sure that, I mean you can't really see it right now, but if I were to break the multi-measure rest, it makes sure that these are vertically spaced out correctly. Again, JW Lua. That's all done here. We just run it. And then some last minute maintenance stuff. These are things like just updating the layout and the spacing. This one just basically undoes the command A by clicking up here. Then it reassigns playback sounds just in case generates the parts if the parts aren't already generated, make sure everything's displayed in concert pitch, and finally updates the layout again. And then the last thing is going to be saving it. It's going to be yeah, almost identical to opening it up in this section, but also saving it to the respective folder depending on the ensemble. So that's a quick introduction of how you can use really large scripts to be really efficient. So hopefully that gives you some ideas, and I will give you more ideas in the next lesson.